Today in Crazy Performance Repair, we are starting where we left off on the previous episode of this broken crankshaft Ford F-150 job. So with that, let's uh, go ahead and get started with today's project and get it put together. So if you haven't seen the previous episode, go ahead and click in the corner there. Uh, make sure to watch all the episodes first before you get to this point. We are actually to the assembly point now. So uh, we're just finishing things up. Now, on my last episode, I had talked about getting the timing cover and valve cover on, getting it all ready to put in the vehicle and we were going to put it in the vehicle. After I got the timing cover on, I realized that I do need to cover something on the front here, a couple of things on the front here that are very good knowledge things for people to know. For one, I did pull the water pump off. Uh, I don't know if it was necessary or not, I don't remember, but I did pull it off regardless. And there's a lot of corrosion behind here. Now, mind you, this truck only has 65,000 miles. I am in Minnesota, so the weather conditions and the salt that's laid on the road for winter time are pretty rough. And that's why we have corrosion already with a 2017. Now, the year is 2019. December of 2019 have you so it's a, a solid two years for sure um, so this thing is definitely corroded already at only two years old so be sure to to think about things as you think taking things apart especially since by the time this video is released and you're probably seeing it it's well after 2019 so this uh, corrosion here we need to address this and the best thing to do to clean it is use something like a super scraper. I've talked about this many times, link in description as usual. The super scraper does an excellent job at cleaning things like this up. And you can see it's just peeling it right off of there. Now that little section there was, I mean, I, I guess I could use thousands of an inch. It's probably 10 or 15 thousand thick in a couple areas. It was pretty darn thick. So considering that, it just plowed it off of there like nothing is pretty awesome so we're just going to go ahead clean this up and then there is a little trick to do to prevent that from happening in the future and you would think you know oh he's just going to glue it on with a little rtv well that's not the case because that that causes problems taking it apart later and you really don't want to use rtv if you can help it in cooling systems due to plugging up the radiator so my solution is actually silicone of all things but not silicone rtv it is a silicone lubricant called dielectric grease. And I will take the dielectric grease and smear it on here before I put the gasket on. And I will also put it on the gasket as well. Because on the gasket itself, the reason this corroded so bad is a little bit of salt water gets behind there. And this is a steel gasket with a rubber core. And the steel and aluminum do not mix very well. They, they corrode horribly when they're next to each other and there's a something to assist it, like ox oxidize it, like uh, salt, which is sodium, it oxidizes metal. So the salt oxidizing the metal, getting the bare steel exposed to the bare aluminum causes a problem. If you take and you smear a little bit of dielectric grease on both surfaces, so both sides of the gasket surface, so you put it on here, stick the gasket in place, put it on this side of the gasket, it will prevent it from corroding in the future. Uh, now this gasket is an embosed gasket, so by that I mean the, the rubber sticks out beyond the metal. And you can feel it very obviously on this gasket. This gasket is actually not shot. I could just replace the gasket and it would be fine, but I'm actually going to reuse this gasket. I'm just going to take a little wire brush and wipe off some of this corrosion a little bit. You could use baking soda, whatever. Clean it up, get the corrosion off, put the gasket back on, and you'll be good as new again. And you don't have to replace it if you don't want to. Uh, I have no reason to replace it on this particular job. I'm not too concerned about it. I'm just gonna go ahead, reuse it, but of course I'm gonna do that first. Now, the other thing I wanted to comment on was applying the balancer or installing the balancer. Now, I'll go ahead and set this on here. It won't push on, okay? The balancer is smaller, the hole in the balancer is smaller than the diameter on the crankshaft. Now, I've covered this on previous videos, but I'm going to cover it on this one. Uh, there is a trick to applying these things, 
And the best thing for somebody who's inexperienced to do is take this balancer, find a, a cooking pot, don't tell the wife, throw this thing in the cooking pot, fill it with water, boil the water. Once it's at boiling temperature, you take this guy, you set it on there, it'll fall into place. It'll be at the perfect temperature as long as the water is actually boiling and plus boiling water will not wreck the seal. So that's why I suggest that for somebody new to doing this. Otherwise, if you have enough experience and you feel comfortable with a torch, what I do is I take a butane torch and I heat this up until I can tell that it's heating up enough that it's gonna maybe affect the rubber soon. And once it's nice and hot, I will slide that on there as well. It'll just fall into place. Once it goes on there, you wanna hold it down. And if you have a water spritzer, maybe spritz it with a little water to cool it so it doesn't wreck the seal. Um, if you use the boiling water method, you won't get it hot enough to wreck the seal, so you won't have to worry about anything. But if you use the torch, you could easily wreck the seal as well. So be sure to have a thing of water ready. As soon as it slid into place, spray it with a little cold water. It'll cool it down enough that it won't wreck the seal, and then start to turn it a little bit. That way you don't get it stuck on the seal in case it was a little hot that it started to melt a little bit. It won't actually hurt anything as long as you go quickly. So that's a little trick for you. I'm gonna go ahead get this finished up and then we'll get this thing on the engine stand and start with the install. Okay, I got the flux plate, the trigger wheel, there's a little toner ring that goes behind this all in place and then I torqued these bolts down. Now when I torqued these bolts down, Ford was nice enough to leave these nice big holes here. What that does, it allows me to take this guy, shove it in here and then the block has all kinds of reinforcement areas and then I just use the torque wrench right on there like this and it was real easy for me to torque this thing down. So. That was pretty, pretty self-explanatory and easy. Now you don't want to forget the plate that has to go here. And before you go putting that plate on there, you want to make sure that you clean up this main mating surface. Now the only spots I have left to clean are the spots where my engine stand was holding the motor because I cleaned it while I was on the engine stand yet. I already cleaned this guy up as well. So in order to put this on though, I'm, I'm gonna actually spray it with a little bit of anexes. So I have this tool crib anexes, it's a spray anexes. It's really nice because you can actually, like it acts like spray paint. You can just spray it on whatever you need to put it on. And it's not near as messy as the actual smear on anexes. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray this surface, put this into place. And I just realized that the dowel for the block is missing here. So I'm gonna grab that out of the transmission before I put this in, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just spray the rest of it. And now when I go to put this on the transmission, that'll keep it clean from the transmission. So I'm gonna put that guy in, then make sure that this is exposed. There's actually a, a well you can see it right here. There's a hole here and that lines up with these and it's right above the starter hole. So I'm gonna line up one of those with that starter hole area. There we go. And now that I have that there, I, after putting that in, will be ready to go for putting this thing in the vehicle. Now I told you this would be a little bit sketchy but uh, I did find a way to make it a little less sketchy I guess. So I have a bolt going through here where I would normally hang the chain from but because of the height restriction as you saw when I pulled this out I have to put this arm underneath here. Now I have the strap going across here. I'm using a heavier strap this time a little bit less stretch in it and then uh, I took this mechanics wire and I went around loop the bolt come back around loop the bolt back around, I did that a few times, and then twisted it together, made sure it's nice and tight. That way it can't slide forward or back. But I do still have a little bit of wiggle room from left to right, so I should be able to wiggle this thing to place. I guess we'll find out. Uh, hopefully it works. If not, I guess I'll have to reset everything, but we'll, we'll give it a shot and see what happens. All right, now is when the fun begins. I'm gonna have to put this motor in here somehow, some way. I have a very strange suspicion this is not gonna go well because of how hard it was to get this thing out of here. So I hope for the best, but I'm gonna go ahead and spray some spray NICs on the transmission as well. This thing was pretty corroded. I actually had to super scraper the transmission housing too. So there's a lot of corrosion in this thing. I just wanna make sure I double up on the NICs in that area because it was pretty tough for me to separate those as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray that and then I'm gonna start working on getting this in there, which is gonna be interesting. Actually, I just noticed something that's probably gonna help me. I should probably drop the differential axle assembly. There's a bolt that I have loose from when I had the pans taken off. I should probably drop that because that's gonna cause issues otherwise. So far, so good. Uh, I have to crawl underneath though. 
can't take you guys along for that. I'm gonna sit there and try and pry, wiggle. I'm trying to get the transmission and engine lined up. Right now I have very little stress on the engine stand, more stress on where the mounts go. Now, the mounts are not set up to be all the way down yet. So I have it so it's floating, but the transmission, if you remember, I put a set of blocks under it to hold it up. And so it's supposed to be above the mounts as far as where the engine bolts up to the transmission. So I'm gonna try and get that all lined up. I'll let you know how it goes, let you know where my troubles were, and uh, I'll be right back for that. But I'm gonna go ahead and crawl under here and try and get it taken care of. Oh yeah. I had a bad feeling for a reason. That was not fun. I mean, I did take my time to make sure I didn't screw anything up. Uh, you know, you don't want to break a case half or something trying to force things into place. But I believe I have it in place. Finally, after two hours of struggling, basically. So, I started at 3 o'clock when I left the camera last. And it is now 5 o'clock. I'm done for the day. I've had it. I'm going to call quits early today. <sighs> I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm hungry. Now I'm cranky. It's not a good time for me to keep working. Uh, I will screw something up. So I'm going to cover up these intake ports just in case and then uh, call it quits for tonight. And you guys will see me first thing in the morning. I'll start trying to line everything up. Now the only thing I have in place is the main bolt for that long one that I was holding on with the strap. Now that caused big issues for me going back in. I pulled it out that way, but for some reason I could not put it back in that way. I had to get very creative and find a way to hold the motor up without resting it on that strap. And once I did that, I was able to get the strap out and then I repositioned it where it was actually grabbing onto the bracket that that bolt goes through instead. And in the midst of doing that, I don't know if I'll be able to see it here, I did damage the strap some, uh, wherever it is. But basically this pl black protective part on the end of the strap, I did tear it a little bit. It's not the end of the world. Uh, I'll get over it. But at least I got this far. So I'm finally to a point where I can start hopefully bolting things up. I think the exhaust might be binding a little bit. I'm not totally positive. But I'll cross that road when I get there tomorrow. So see you guys in the morning. All right, it is the next morning. I am underneath the vehicle. I'm going to go ahead and start attaching things on the bottom here and so uh, basically I'm gonna I'm gonna cover some important details that happen to be underneath here while I'm under here so once you have the engine and transmission bolted together I only have a couple bolts holding it together right now uh, basically just enough that I can squeeze it together so it's it's tight ish I mean I'm not gonna reef the heck out of them but you can see they are flush and that's what's important that you get it flush without having to reef those bolts together so once you have that part of it done then you need to go to the torque converter itself to tighten the torque converter down and of course the only way you're going to get this like this is if your torque converter is lined up once you have the torque converter lined up these bolts will be sticking through here and in order to be sure that you don't have any kind of issues with these bolts or the torque converter being lined up. All you have to do is put your hand on the bolt here and you hear that thunking. I'm going back and forth. I'm intentionally pushing it up and down. And the fact that it moves that easy by hand means that you have nothing binding and that's a good sign. So now I can go ahead and start putting the, the nuts on the torque converter deals here and I will be using a blue Loctite on the threads just because I've learned from experience it's a good plan to do that. So be sure to put a little blue Loctite on there. Once you have that done, you'll be able to go ahead and put the starter into place. You can see I have it hanging here. It is quite a task to weasel it in between everything, but once that's done, um, then you're pretty much ready to go with the rest of the assembly, which is perhaps what you're seeing in the split screen here. So I'll go ahead and continue the assembly on the bottom half. Once I have that accomplished, I will go ahead and get the top half of it done. So what you're gonna see here is what I was not able to show you guys on the other video because I skipped over it thinking that there was gonna be some kind of weird quick fix with this vehicle, like a rod bearing or something of that nature. Just And that was only gonna be done if it was even a possibility. If there was huge scoring, huge problems, it wasn't gonna happen. Anyway, I digress. We're gonna go ahead and get this thing put together 
and we'll continue on from this point forward and get it done. All right, so I'm not planning on doing a whole lot of talking, but uh, you're gonna get an overhead view for a little while, and if for any reason you're doing this yourself and you're using this as a reference as to what to connect to where, I'm winging it, I'm trying to figure it out. Obviously, I don't remember how this goes together, but I'm typically pretty good at figuring out how things go together. So I will remember what I can, put together what I can, so feel free, if you're using this as a reference, to go ahead and slow it down. It'll make it a lot easier for you to watch. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through a bunch of this with a lot less talking than the usual video. And if I come across something I need to reference for talking, you will see me again yakking away. But you can always speed it up so you can actually hear me talk normal. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and get to assembling. Right now I'm just trying to figure out how to do the power cord. There's a big thing that goes underneath here and it's supposed to kind of attached to something. I'm trying to figure that out before I do the cooler lines here, which go on a little stub that sticks out underneath this balancer area. So once I get that figured out, I'll be going to the rest of it. I do have to still do the top bolts on the transmission. I do that from the top side with a ratchet wrench. So I will do that as well. And then the rest of it's gonna be just trying to figure things out and assembling it pretty much. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that. Well, up to the corner I go. But this little, this part of the project is going to be interesting. These are all the hoses and whatnot. So I got some boost, some charge pipe, intake pipe. I'm missing one intake pipe. Up. Oh, there it is. I think. I don't know. I'm missing an intake pipe. I'll have to find that. That's another charge pipe over there that you guys may or may not be able to see. Uh, these are all the coolant hoses. This is going to be fun trying to finagle this in. Now I remember removing this. It was quite challenging to pull all these out because they were all intertwined and wrapped around each other. You know, everything was inside a loop here and inside a loop there, and it was just a complete mess. So this should be very interesting trying to get this all assembled. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a challenge to say the least. So you're seeing me struggle with it now, and hopefully I'm figuring it out reasonably quick, but uh, probably not. I, I imagine this is gonna be quite the challenge for me. So. Ooh, I can see, I know where this one goes. I can tell that because of this bracket. But other than that, I pretty much only know what's a charge pipe and what's an intake pipe. Otherwise, I have no idea how to lay them out. So this should be fun. Well, that was uh, interesting to say the least. So I got all the hoses except for the main intake one because I don't have the intake on yet. I figure I'll leave that out of the way just so I have a little more room that may or may not help me. So I'm leaving that for a little bit later. But the rest of these hoses, I, this one I need to find a hose clamp for. I don't know what happened to the little spring clamp. But uh, the rest of them I have them in place, just not clamped down. And then this here, big assembly of a fitting. I don't have the bolts holding it in, so I gotta go find the bolts. I'm pretty sure they're just on my shelf over there. And then um, the rest of it's pretty much in. That was much easier to deal with than when the radiator was in the way. So. Do that before the radiator. The radiator's still gonna be easy. I can push these out of the way and get the radiator down into place. So that'll make life a little bit easier for you. Um, but this thing is a mess. I mean, the, the entanglement here, I'll go ahead and put this hose down here so you see the right position. Uh, the entanglement here is just crazy trying to get everything so that it doesn't fight each other. I had to pop one of these quick connect fittings off and go around this big pipe because that was easier than removing the pipe again. Uh, it's just, it's it's crazy to me how much hose they have going on in here. So that's just the intake and cooling system. So I still have to connect back here for the coolant, and then I still have to connect some reservoirs and all kinds of PCV related hoses. So I'm still going to go ahead and go further with that. So I'll be in the corner here and uh, yakking away a little bit while I'm doing that, but I have to figure out what this goofy contraption goes to here. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's PCB related and I'm pretty sure it sits somehow in here. Oh wait, there we go. Hey, that's probably how that goes. I'm not sure. Oh, there we go. That goes there. So I'm getting it. It's just a matter of time. That probably goes to the intake. Uh, this guy probably goes up here. And then I got a lot of plugins, a lot of sensors and stuff that I have to find their little homes for. So a lot of little stuff to do as you can see me doing and I'm gonna just keep going to town on all these different sensors and fittings and weird stuff and hose clamps. And just a lot of piddly 
dicking around type things that I have to do. So that's going to take a little bit, but for you guys, it'll be really fast. Way faster than it's going to take me. I mean, I probably have you guys sped up to 1500% or something of that nature. Uh, 50, 15 times or something like that, faster than normal speed, or probably even faster than that, maybe 20 times faster. But either way, I'm going to be sped up quite a bit. So bear with it here. I will get it all together and we will see how well this thing runs. It should run like normal again. All right, well, as you can see, I'm struggling quite a bit in the spot below there, but there's a hole in this piece and it fits this rubber deal. And then the rubber, there, the radiator goes inside here. I'm having a heck of a time getting the radiator to all cooperate and end up in here with this thing in there. It's become quite a challenge. Uh, I will certainly get it, of course, but it is not as easy as I had hoped. So I'm gonna continue, I'm giving you guys this view now because I want you guys to see how I'm struggling and how I'm trying to battle this thing. I had to disconnect this again even though I had it attached before and I'm just kind of trying to manipulate things in order to get it where I want. I see where it's binding and I can't seem to flex it enough to get it out of that position. So I'm going to try playing with some pry bars real gently here and see if I can't get it to cooperate the way I want. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a a little bit of a pry and a little flex on the plastic without prying too hard on any critical parts of the radiator and hope I can get it to go. Well, that's lovely. I lost the little rubber deal. So I gotta look for that once I find it. I should be able to finally slip it in there and uh, get this thing together. I think I have it in a position where I can just kind of lift it up and get it to work. I just had to get it in just the right spot. It's really, really, really fussy. So I'm gonna find that and then I will slide it in there. But lo and behold, here it is, right here, rolled underneath the chair. It's no wonder I couldn't find the stupid thing. So now I can finish getting this radiator installed on finally, but I've been searching for this thing for the last 20 minutes probably, so darn it anyhow. All right, so I skipped a bit of footage of the finishing up, just the little piddly stuff, you know, the, the air cleaner, things like that, which I haven't even put this cover on for. It's an aftermarket air cleaner. We're actually gonna be putting the stock one back in this truck pretty soon. But uh, for now, I'm just gonna start it like this. And I just want you guys here so you guys can hear how horrible this thing is gonna sound when it first starts. I guarantee you it's gonna rattle like crazy because of how much oil is drained out of the entire system. The phasers, that one that was thunking, I guarantee is gonna rattle quite a bit. And then as soon as it gets enough oil pressure, the rattle will be gone. So at least hypothetically speaking, unless I screwed something up. It is a major surgery, so that is a possibility. And it's one of those things I've learned to just accept and try it and hope I didn't screw something up, I guess. So we'll grab the key, we're gonna fire this thing up and see, attempt to fire this thing up and see if it uh, runs worth a crap. And then if I get smoked out because I'm not shutting the door, all I'm going to do is fire it up, get some oil pressure, shut it down. Uh, so if I do get smoked out in that short little bit, then I will be headed in the house because at the end of the day anyway, it's like 7 o'clock at night. So let's, uh, let's give this thing a try and see how it sounds. I hope it doesn't blow up. fuel. I'm surprised it even started. You notice how that rattle was really nasty at first even while cranking and then as soon as it fired up shortly don't be turning the fuel pump on now. Shortly after the uh, rattle went away lost my train of thought for a second the rattle went away and then the fuel there is shut off because there's a huge fuel leak couldn't get enough fuel. Now I'm probably gonna have to prime the high pressure pump because that's probably the only amount of fuel that was in there and that's why it ran for a little bit. 
we'll, we'll find out. I'm gonna go ahead, find out which fuel line I forgot. Oops. And then uh, try again, I guess. Always have to forget something, dang it. And unfortunately, it was a fuel line this time. Oh, there it is. I found it. Yeah, that should work a little bit better. One of those things in the back of the motor that you just overlook when you're doing it. All right. Try this again. I'm calling it quits for the day. A little smoky, but not bad. Just a small amount of haze. So less than I expected, even though I didn't really do anything in the combustion chambers to cause oil in there. But I did have it upside down for a while, and I did pull the pistons up to get them lined up with the crankshaft. So I thought I might have pulled some oil in past the rings, but apparently it wasn't too bad. So just a little bit of smoke. Not horrible. You guys probably can't even see it on camera. Like, share, subscribe. And as always, I hope to see you in the next video. And this one was definitely an interesting one. If you stayed with me this long, awesome, you're one of few. But thanks for watching anyway, and I am going to go in for the night, call this video quit.